Okay, so today I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try to show you how to go from 0 to 100 in preparing docking, in preparing and effecting a docking using Autodock FR or ADFR. I'm not going to show you how to install it. That should be pretty easy nowadays. However, it does require a Unix environment, either Linux, any flavor, I hope, and macOS. I'm on macOS, so that is what I'm going to show you. And we are going to do this, of course, with the knowledge that we have for COVID-19, uh, specifically with the Protease, which is uh, deposited on the RCSP database. Oh, sorry. As 6LU7, this crystal structure. I have already processed it using Chimera to separate the protein, the dimer actually, from the one of the inhibitors, one copy of the molecular inhibitor already docked here. So I'm not going to show you how to install ADFR or how to prepare these files. I'm only going to show you what to do with them. So here are my files. I can probably open them on Chimera, UCSF Chimera, my favorite default program for looking at the structures. Uh, there should be two entries here. Yes, one is the ligand because it's a part peptide. It's displayed here as this uh, ribbon and uh, the structure. So clearly, because this structure has been, or this and actually many other structures have been so important for the past year, we know the binding site. However, I'm going to try to cover this tutorial from the point of view of not knowing really where it is and taking, uh, picking a binding site from scratch. So uh, we need a terminal. In my case, I use iTerm. I'm going to load my the path that belongs specifically to ADFR. There we go. And move myself to that folder. Uh, these steps, of course, are totally different for different architectures, different um, setups. Now, let me pause for a second. OK, so ADFR. First of all, uh, what I'm going to do is show you how to prepare the, oh, sorry, prepare the receptor, which should be pretty easy, to prepare the ligand. Which also should be fairly easy. There's aspects of that that could be really, really complex. Then, um, Pre find the uh, a putative binding site and generate the grids. Uh, I'm talking about autodoc, so this means that we need to generate uh, maps that are representing the possible interactions between the ligand and the receptor. This one in particular can be done through a graphical interface which in this ADFR is called AGFR GUI or B uh, explicitly through the command line with uh, AD, AGFR, which can do pretty much the same. And then finally, the fourth actually execute docking. Okay, I do recommend you check the site uh, for ADFR. The documentation is not perfect, but it's all there. And there is actually some material already prepared to run uh, your own tutorials or their own tutorials. And you can uh, take advantage of that. So preparing the receptor. I think that, in fact, I'm going to show you how to do it, taking it from this. Here we go. Here are the basic command lines. In case you cannot see that, I'm going to make it as big as I can on my screen. AGFR pre for preparing the receptor and ADFR. Now, oh, sorry, this is this is to actually run this this uh, the process of the grids or the docking. So what I'm looking for is not exactly here. So I'm going to go to the documentation, step by step tutorials, and okay, yeah, as this is this is something that is skipped here. But it's actually somewhere on the website. Uh, 
let me see if it's over here. So this is part of the documentation that is kind of confusing. Okay, it's not here. I know it's here. Ah, uh, yeah, it's probably in the old site. So let's let's do uh, let's do it by by ear. We need a command called prepare, which is going to be receptor for the protein. There are the basics of the command line. I hope you can see them on my screen. Uh, I'm going to give it the PDB of the protein I, I want. I'm going to name the output. Mm, just adding the extension PDBQT. And I'm going to let it do the automatic thing. I'm, I, I'm expecting this to be a simple receptor. No problem should be found. And after running the command, you can see that we have now a new PDBQT file bigger than this one because it has to ha add some information about the file, uh, that is the charges, add, it, add them to the, to the file. So that is pretty normal. Now I'm going to use, maybe I, I should make my command line bigger. I hope that's better. Uh, there. The command for preparing the ligand is prepare ligand, we need to give it the ligand, which in my case I name lig.pdb. Uh, do I get to? Yes, I need to name the output, which I'm going to call uh, ligxrd, because it comes from the um, PDBQT, PDBQT, because it comes from the crystallographic structure. So nothing else I'm going to add. Now, all of Oh, yes, the root. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, this is something kind of tricky. Let me see if I can solve it quickly. Uh, index. Oh, it goes an index. So, no, I need to open the file and let, take a look at it. Because I think I'm going to use this index. Uh, I think it refers to this number two. And if not, <laughs> I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. No, uh, one. Okay, uh, just to check it works. I'm gonna read. Yeah, it looks it looks decent. Notice this is a very tough ligand. It has 23 active torsions. I think that the original Autodoc had a maximum of 32. I'm not sure, but still, it's a lot of torsions. This is gonna be a ligand that is super tough. So this is a step one and two. Now step. Three. I'm going to start with the GUI. Now, there is. So, to use the command line, you need to already know where the box of your searcher is going to be and another few items. So, right off the bat, ideally, people that start working on this probably should do better by. Uh, sorry, by. Yes. By using the graphical interface. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you the graphical interface. It's not as intuitive as, as others. So yeah, take, take good care in paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm gonna, oh, by the way, one reason I do prefer ADFR and AGFR is that they are multi-threaded. So if you have a computer with many cores, both programs are going to be able to take advantage of that. Whereas for an Autodoc and Autobreed 3, 4, you need you only can use one CPU at a time. So, okay, let's do this. I'm going to open the receptor. And even though I had a ligand, I have a ligand already prepared. I'm not going to take it into account. I'm going to I'm going to run the process the way I would have to if I didn't know the binding site. You notice I have a dimer. Uh, I think did I created this. If you download the 6 LU, you will get a monomer. Now, here is where the magic starts in the ligand binding pockets. I do recommend you use a uh, auto site 1.1 and then click on the button. This is going to take a while. Are you? Uh, oh, do I need hydrogen atoms? I didn't know that. Okay, so this. Mm, I thought, oh, okay, so this is problematic. I need to have hydro hydrogen bonds. Okay, so I'm going to go back and figure out why this not works. So it's on the prepare receptor. 
I need the help. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat my command, prepare receptor, and I'm gonna add whatever line it's required to add hydrogens. So I guess I guess minus a hydrogens and because not every hydrogen should be kept only the, those that can be a uh, polar that can make uh, polar bonds should be kept I'm gonna add minus u and NPHS which will merge all the hydrogens that are not able to perform to create hydrogen bonds that should be that should be enough Okay, then let's go back to the graphical interface. I'm gonna drink some water. In fact, you know, I'm gonna remove my my video. <laughs> you don't need me there. Okay, again, PDVQT for the receptor. Okay, it looks as is as if it has hydrogens, which is what we wanted. Selecting autosite 1.1 and run it as I say you this might take a while it's gonna use as much CPU as it can and in the at the end of the process it's gonna show us a list of the sites that it found uh, and we're gonna have to select which ones to keep and which ones to discard I apologize for the environment noise, but that is what we have to deal these days, not being in a quiet office or a proper, a proper recording booth. Have to get used to the position of the screen. Well, you can see the corner, the lower left corner, still working on the affinity maps. It's not using a lot of CPU, which is fine, I guess. It's probably going to use a lot more when we generate the grid. Ah, here we go. Let me take my image away. Uh -huh. So you can manipulate the view easily, rotate, and it's fairly easy to see that this first field is actually at the interface. But if you don't know of a binding site, that, that is a valid way to start. I'm going to turn it off by clicking on this checkbox. Uh, sorry. Why is it not? There. Oh, okay. So I can only click one at a time. That actually, I think it's a proper binding site. That is where one of the ligands is located. I'm trying to see... Uh, yeah, there, there should be a histidine, a cysteine, and other atoms in there, but I cannot really see them. Uh, but that, that looks like a good starting point. Why can I not see a cysteine there? Maybe it's not the right binding site. Mm -hmm. I'm suspecting, but then again, this is symmetrical. So let's see the next one. Uh -huh, that one is symmetrical, yeah, exactly on the other side. But yeah, I think those, both of those are incorrect. At least uh, from what I can see on the surface. I really don't like these interfaces because it, they are difficult to handle. So this should be a binding site. Here I can see a cysteine and another one over there but you could pick any of these by just selecting which one 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, my suspicion is that the binding site is over here, so I'm going to discard this. Four, five, six, Mm -hmm. Wow, there's plenty. Mm -hmm. I guess that uh, just for, for the sake of figuring out, figuring out which should be the best, or finding out if one of these is actually the best, I'm going to load the ligand. Okay, there it is. Probably need a mouse and not my trackpad for this. Okay. Clearly, this is not the site. That is not the same. That is not it. No. Mm, no. Okay, as you can see, it's not as easy as tutorials make it to look like. Yeah, and it was that binding site was not located. So this is one of the tricky things about locating a binding site when it's not known. Okay, I think those are the closest dots that you could find. Number 17, I'm going to select all and select only 17. It's a tiny part of that region. But as you can see, it was really, really hard to use, to find. Okay, let's assume we have some other heuristic to select the one. I will select this one just of, because of prior knowledge. Or if, if we are trying to design a competitive inhibitor that binds exactly on the catalytic side. If that was the case, this is the moment where I will select for all atoms in the affinity maps, all atom types. The reason for that is that because I loaded the ligand, if I select these types below, those were selected based on the ligand. So they are going to represent only atoms already present on the ligand, which will restrict a screening. You may have ligands with more atoms, different atoms than those present on this one. So I will select for all atoms types. I need to, there's another thing to change here. Um, Yeah, this is the part that I, I was confused about. How to make... Ah, yes, yes, this one. Sorry. Uh, box all ligand binding pockets. There. That is a step I miss. Now, as it is, this box is really way too small for the very same ligand I'm using to find the binding site. So this setting of the padding is going to be an important one because this can... Uh, increase that box so that this ligand and other bigger ligands fit as you can see padding here is crucial otherwise the box will be too tiny and the search is going to be insufficient i think that um, 10 is probably enough if i'm going to make it 12 just not to bias this so much that it's a foregone conclusion that the binding site is is there and now that this is done, I should be able to generate the 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 the, the, the maps. Now I gotta be sure because now oh yes another notice if you generate grids for all of the binding all of the atom types as selected here it's gonna take longer and it's gonna generate a lot more files than if you restrict yourself to the atoms in the ligand. I'm going to do that 
even if the video, I have to accelerate the video because I really want to make sure that if you are going to go screening with this method, you need to generate files, files for all of the atoms that you can find in your ligands. Otherwise, you are going to have failures because you didn't generate these grids. So I'm going to click generate. That is going to use a ton of CPU. Maybe I may have to stop the recording and continue later. So here we go. See you on the other side. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I need to create a folder or an output file. Uh, I, AGFR is going to create compressed files after it's done. But in the transit, it's going to have, have uh, to use some space. You can see on the top rightmost corner, my CPU going wild. Uh -huh. The gradient, I think that is something fairly new in this AGFR. It's a way to represent the boundary between the protein and the solvent. I, I, don't, I, haven't re I don't remember how the paper describes this, but it seems to be an improvement for that boundary condition. I can show you what's going on on the folders. Here is the folder I selected, and oh, you see all of the maps, HS uh, for sulfur and hydrogen, magnesium, hydrogen bond donors, acceptor, nitrogen as an acceptor of hydrogen bond, iron, bromine, I don't remember this one, acceptor, carbon, manganesium, so on and so forth. The, air, the field map, I think that is now electrostatics too and the coordinates of the map. So everything is still being calculated. When it's done, this, this generation is going to stop and we're going to have the maps to perform the docking. Now there's many, this can be repeated again for the, um, the command line, but you already need to know where are you going to locate this box. Whereas here with this implementation of AutoSight, you can identify different uh, pockets and target them. The other way to do, to do this without knowing a binding site, I guess, would have been targeting the biggest one. So that the first one was on the interface between the dimers, which might be an interesting target. Uh, but then other heuristics will have to be taken into account without knowing, uh, without having a crystallographic structure with a ligand. I guess I would have looked up binding site residues if they are known, catalytic residues if they are known, and other telltales uh, of where a binding site could be. You could also target a specific location known through sequencing or other methods without structure. Uh, doc covalent docking can be done with, a with auto dock with this ADFR. Uh, and I think I have had some chats, but in Spanish, about how to do this. Maybe one of these days I'll be brave enough to create another tutorial like this. Now, I think it's almost done. It's actually going to transform this folder of files into a compressed file. I haven't checked if it's compressed. The, the instructions of the command line implied on the command line implied that they are zipped, even if they end up with a DRG extension. Now, this part can take, well, I mean, my, bo my box is not really big. No, it's done. Excellent. So here we go. From the 100 megabytes that it was before, now we have a TRG of 20 megabytes. We can confidently close this. Uh -huh. Oh, here are the results that were, that will be obtained from the command line during the screening for the binding sites. But we already have that uh, over here somewhere. So now, Third part, I'm going to skip B for the command line and I'm going to go to for the execute docking. So the docking ADFR. Now this one, it's a command line that is fairly complex. So I'm going to try to copy it from the documentation and I'm going to copy. Let me think. I should have one that I used recently. Let me see. History grep ADFR. 
Mm -hmm. This one has been created, crafted for uh, covalent talking. So it has instructions that we may not want. Uh, and I'm going to start editing. First, this one does require the ligand. So in our case, ligand, ligand XRD uh, indicated by this minus L. Then minus T, which should direct this command line to the TRG, the targets we create, the, the grids. You can assign a job name. So this one I'm going to call auto site, just to reflect that we located the site like that. This minus C is for the covalent docking. So I'm going to remove it. NB runs. This is the number of actual docking experiments to perform. I'm going to reduce it to 10 just to make a quick exercise. This number will have to be decided empirically. I think that by default, if I was not indicating these MB runs, it would be a hundred. But depending on the complexity, the complexity of the ligand and the complexity of the receptor or the size of the box, you may need to increase that a lot. In some cases, in fact, covalent docking to this coronavirus protease gets the best results in my hands when you reach, ra raise that MB runs to a thousand. And the max evals, which is the search, the number of energy evaluations for searching the best of each one of those 10 results, my best numbers are in the million or in the 10 millions. So it's quite an extensive, extensive search that has to be carried out for some ligands. But again, these numbers, I leave it to the user to find empirically which are going to be best. Here I'm going to use 10 runs at 100,000 evaluations. The output is just to write the results. Minus T is a command that supposedly reduces the size of the output. And minus C, lowercase c, is for using only four cores, which in my case, I will appreciate this autodog not to use every single uh, thread so that my recording doesn't go to, to the garbage bin. Okay, let's see how fast is this. Uh, I don't know how fast it's going to be. This is the first time I tried to do this docking. The reason I change and I suggest the change from AutoDock 4 or 3 to ADFR is because I think the tools have improved a lot. Again, specifically the use of many cores for AGFR and ADFR and the covalent docking. Uh, I think that if you have already experience on AutoDock, this should be easy. You can see that because the tiny amount of runs and the number, the small number of maximum evaluations. This is going really, really fast. I won't be surprised if the, the results are not the best, but at least we're going to get results and quickly. Okay, now this, I still, I'm still no, not sure how to read this, but I think that the best case scenario is when you get some percentage in runs stopped when they convert to one, convert to one or two clusters. Why? And the reason is right here, because each one of these runs gave different uh, results or rather significantly different in that they are several Armstrongs in RMSD apart. Binding affinity is pretty good, minus seven. It's it's a decent affinity, but the cluster size is of one. The standard deviation in the RMSD, which is not measured because for the reference, I need to provide a ligand, the original ligand, if possible. It's a, not a number. The same for the energy. This one is because the cluster size is one. And here is the results. Now, because this was very fast, I'm going to do some changes to my command line. First, I'm going to increase the number of runs just to try to get clusters within the results. And I'm also going to give it a reference. I think that should be minus R and it's going to be the original ligand. This PDBQT is the ligand as it was bound to the to the catalytic side. So this should work and it shouldn't take long. So let's cross fingers and hopefully I can show you uh, how you follow which conditions in terms of runs and evaluations are going to be the best. Maybe I should add a 0.5 uh, evaluate 
results. In this case, I just evaluate them by looking at the clusters and the energetics, which at a glance tell us that they are incomplete because we don't have more than one representative per cluster. Uh, and that is probably something to guide you first. If it works the way I did it in the previous run, you know that your every step was right. We should have checked what happens on the structure. That is also important. But what just the statistics of the energetics will tell us we need to increase the runs and the evaluations. Now, in the next step, if we get more than one structure per cluster, we can go to the next phase, which will be analyzed in a Chimera. That will be my visualizer of choice. Something like this. This one is taking a little bit longer, but it's not that bad. I'm going to mute my microphone and remove my video while it works. Of course, I mean, I raised the number of runs an order of magnitude, so it's not as fast as before, but it's still going. We just have to wait. Okay, I'm going to introduce an editing point right here. See you in a few. Okay, the results are coming in. And as you can see, whew, the problem is fairly difficult as even with this number of runs and evaluations, seemingly each result is a cluster on its own. Yep, a total of 100 clusters. So this clearly shows, yep, we don't have statistics. This clearly shows that this probably should be run in a in a cluster, in a computational cluster, or at least not the four cores that I have locally, and increase the number of evaluations. Even a hundred runs with a thousand hundred thousand evaluation is not enough. Uh, I think we got a very similar result. Now we do have this reference R RMSD because we gave the the original file, and they are pretty far away, which also might be a consequence of having just very few energetic evaluations. So let's use Chimera and check what the results are. The files we need to open are, of course, the receptor as well as this out uh, PDBQT. This information that we saw on the terminal is stored on the DLG file. So don't worry about not having that in front of you because it's still I'm going to use this file. It's still stored there. Mm, probably from here, it's going to be the easiest way. As, as a receptor, you can open it any way you want on Chimera. But for the results, I do recommend using tools, a structure binding, view doc. And if not selected, make sure you ask the program for the autodoc results. So ours are here on file or oh, sorry, on test. It's going to take a second. I mean, it's opening 100 results in the single file. In that single file, I'll show you over here. You can already see where they are located. It's taking quite a bit more time than usual, maybe because of the number. Yeah, thank you. Uh, for whatever reason, the file format is not set up in such a way that we can see the affinities here, as will happen with Autodoc Bina, uh, I think maybe even Autodoc or even Mole, uh, sorry, UCSF Doc. So let me try to get a good representation here. 
show uh, show walls and sticks show oh I think I need to hide the ribbon yeah but still doesn't look quite right uh, hang on Just this, uh, all these adjustments I'm making are pretty much cosmetic. Uh huh. So here, yeah, there we go. Hide ribbon. Uh huh. Okay. This this lagon is problematic because of this. Uh, the atoms get mangled because it's not a single continuous continuous structure. Uh, but that is a problem of this lagon in particular. It can be fixed, but I wanted just to do this just for the purpose of showing you how to prepare the files yeah so uh, we found a binding site with high affinity maybe none of this represents the perfect result but at least I showed you how to do it if you use a different ligand a better behave ligand or even from another source that is not the crystallographic one you'll get awesome better results and probably even more convergent as as i said before the main difficulty with this ligand is that uh, it has 20 something degrees of freedom so it's a difficult ligand. well i hope this illustrates how to use these tools for this type of uh, docking of course uh, preparing something slightly more complex or uh, different what I mean by that is for example prepare for a screen of multiple ligands will require command line prepare a screen for multiple receptors will also require more command line and scripting but here are the basics that you can adapt to your needs needs now thank you for being here subscribe if you like give a thumbs up leave some comments and I'll see you next time ciao Okay, after the previous failure, I realized that I could do something to improve these results. Uh, so uh, I'm making sure that I prepare the ligand again. For this, I want to make sure, yes, that I can use the MOL2 format. I downloaded this ligand uh, from the UCSF Sync database. This should be a very good quality ligand. And I'm going to use it to produce the the file that i'm gonna dock against the the protein so i'm just gonna call it sync sync or sorry set uh, 85 dot pdbqt now i also wanted to take this instance to show or to explain that because we already created the grid we don't have to repeat the process and because we created the grid to cover all atoms possible in ADFR, we don't have to do it again, even if this was a totally distinct, different, uh, independent ligand. We just need to prepare new ligands and we can run the docking. Now I'm going to reuse my original 10 runs, uh, 100,000 evaluations, and I'm going to change the name of the ligand here. This should be super quick. In fact, I'm timing myself. Ah, something went wrong. Uh, because I'm not in the... Oh, yeah, I mistyped the name of the file. Typical basic error on my part. So I was saying I'm timing myself against coffee preparation. And if this works as I expect... Oh, you know, I'm going to stop it. This is the one with the lowest evaluation uh, in terms of number of runs as well as evaluations, but I want I do want to use this the PDBQT file of the crystallographic ligand as a reference. I think that should work, but if not, at least I want to have the numbers in the columns so I can show them to you. This should be super quick, and if it works, we should get the results, and we can visualize them. As I added here, just improving my results, I, we can visualize them and see if using a better ligand, not the crystallographic one, I always warn against using those. PDB files are awful for chemistry. Better to get a new file or to curate it in such a way that it doesn't cause a disaster the way mine did. The small two file from UCSF Sync, a database of ligands, should work just fine. Or at least that, that's what I expect. Let's find out. Okay, this looks exactly like before. 10 runs are really, really just too few. Let's see the 
Ah, look at those results, minus 7.8, and a reference uh, RMSD of 3.9. And again, we only get a, a, a one result per bin. Uh, I'm going to change this to 100 and a million, but I'm going to reduce the number of CPUs so we can try and visualize what's going on while this is running. Of course, the run is going to take long. Maybe it won't make it to this video. Yeah, in fact, I shouldn't even run it. Let's go to see the result. Uh, again, the PDB is going to be open on Chimera. And from within Chimera, I'll open the result file, the PDBQT from this ligand obtained from UCSF Sync. My computer is a little bit old and particularly weak on the graphic cards department. That's why I modify the cosmetics a lot. This should be the right file. I mean, your computers is likely that you, oops, you don't have to worry about those things, but I have to in mine. Okay. Okay. And then remove the silhouettes I can do with uh, cues. Lighting. This is uh, this is purely cosmetic. I don't like the reflections. And there we go. Now look at that ligand. Beautiful. I think. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I think this should be pretty similar to the experimental one. How to figure it out? Well, uh, fortunately, I should have it around here. There we go. And I need to find out where the ligand is. Uh, maybe I did remove it. Mm, hang on. Oh, this is a monomer. Okay, so let's see. This is... This can get tricky. B. I'm gonna have to align them on the fly with chain B. Mm, this one. And that, okay, I hope that works. No, what did I do wrong? Hmm. Oh, this one. Aha. There, aha, excellent. Uh, it, it's look, it looks ugly, but here you can see the ligand that we care for. Hide the ribbon show balls and sticks now invert selection for the selected model to hide all of the other uh, sticks and the ribbon too it just make everything makes everything uglier and as you can see it's 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 actually wrong uh, this ring is on the opposite side uh, let's try to see the others yeah, that one is in a better orientation, but still not perfect. This one starts looking like it, still not perfect. But then again, these are 10 results. Uh, this this one doesn't look too bad. Still not enough, statistically speaking. Hundreds or maybe thousands of runs and then tens, millions or tens of millions of the evaluations. But I'm happy that we managed to improve this. The reason the other ligand was so bad is likely uh, that I started from the crystallographic ligand, which is terrible for chemical things such as docking, computationally speaking, is. Thank you. Subscribe.